You know, in today's society, and merely in the South, they train you to hate the Lord. You go to your Baptist church. You go to your Lutheran church. You sit in there and you be scriptural illiterate. Can't find none of your religion, your beliefs of God in the Bible. And if you do find something that sounds like your religion, your belief from hell, you twist the scripture up and bend it so it lines up with what you feel and think. Now, we have an ancient religion, an ancient belief that came down from God from heaven. It was a, a, a salvation plan. Is that right? It was a salvation plan to save souls. Is that right? It was to save souls. So I know people will get mad and arrogant and, and get upset and smack their lips and say, preacher this, preacher that. But I'm going to let you know, this message was preached before I was born. Amen. Is that right? Amen. I want to get with the book of Jeremiah, the sixth chapter. And I believe it's verse 16. And the scripture says, Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Stand ye in the ways and see. Stand ye in the ways and see. And ask for the old paths. And ask for the old paths. Hold it. The Bible says, give me the beginning again. Stand ye what? Stand ye in the ways and see. Stand ye in the ways and see. And ask for the old paths. You know, one thing about the devil is that the devil hates God so much that he wants to try to be God. Therefore, if his characteristic will try to match God, but if you're in God, you will know it's the devil. Amen. Is that right? Amen. And this is what I mean. The devil will come out with a vengeance such as saying there's a new way to holiness. Amen. There is a new way to serve God. There's a new way to worship God. The devil will come out with antics making you believe is that you could be of the world and still stand with God and get to heaven. The devil will make you think that you could still be a pimp and pimp women and you could still see the kingdom of God. The devil will make you think that it's okay to fornicate, commit adultery, idolize basketball players, idolize football players. The devil will make you think these things. But God is telling you something. The Bible says what? Stand in the ways. Stand ye in the way. And see. And see. God wants you to see it. Amen. He wants you to see it. Is that right? Amen. If you don't understand the ways of the Lord, you're not going to see it. You're not going to be at the point where you can understand it to walk in it. God wants you to see it. And the Bible says what? And ask for the old pals. Ask for the old pals. Where is the good way? Where is the good way? Notice how God said it was good. Amen. Notice how men come and they will say, oh, that's not good. I'm going to do what I want to do. I, I, I'm going to serve God the way that I want to serve him. Uh, well, if you believe that, then, then that's what you believe, and I'm going to believe what I believe. That don't work like that. Amen. The Bible don't play these games of any, meeny, miny, mo. You do you and I do me. It don't play them games. You have a righteous, holy man, and then you have a sinner. You either going to be holy or you're going to be of the devil. The Bible says the good way and and walk therein and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls and ye shall find the rest for your souls. Hold it. Now I want to, and God's so good, we're going to combine the scriptures from the old and the new. Amen. So understand, he said, you shall find the rest for your souls when you return back to the old ancient way. And that ancient way is the word of God. Amen. Is that right? Amen. It's the ancient way, a word that was given unto Moses. Amen. A word that was given unto his apostles. Amen. A word that was given unto John the Baptist. Amen. That was given unto David, Isaiah. Is that right? Amen. A word that was given to Ezekiel. Amen. That thou shalt be holy, Amen. for I am holy. Amen. It's the same message. Requirements. Might have been different, Amen. but it's the same message. Amen. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Amen. Is that right? Amen. That's the ancient way. Amen. Now, in the Baptist church, you can't be holy. 
Because they tell you when you believe in God, you feel with the Holy Ghost. The Bible don't teach that. Amen. They'll tell you that you don't got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible don't teach that. Amen. They will tell you that you can pray to God any, anyhow, anywhere, and you can pray to him how the way you want to pray to him. Amen. And the Bible don't teach that. Amen. The Bible teaches us to come to God exactly the way he wants you to come up to him. Amen. And when you come to God, the Bible teaches you that you got to have a sincere heart in the willing mind. Amen. And when you come up to him, you will be, be ready to receive what God got to say. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Notice how Samuel, when he went unto the Lord, and he spoke unto God when God was calling upon him. And then immediately when God spoke unto Samuel, Samuel began to speak unto Eli and let him know that death was coming. Amen. Is that right? Amen. You know, we will be like, I'm ready to hear from the Lord. But right when we hear from the Lord, Lord will give us a message that will burn our hairs and our nostrils. That will burn a lot make us go bald head. Why? Because it hurts so much. Amen. It stings so much. Amen. It causes problems so much. Why? It's because it's telling you to deny yourself. Amen. Is that right? Amen. It is a hard thing to deny yourself. Amen. To put down that second wife. Amen. To stop smoking them cigarettes. Amen. To stop smoking blunts. Amen. To stop being a hypocrite, high-minded and arrogant. Amen. It is hard to do those things. Is that right? Amen. It is hard. To don't look at a woman to lust after her. Amen. It is hard. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Is that right? Amen. It's hard to get away from the family members Amen. that won't still serve the devil and act like they serve God. Amen. It's hard to hang with people that seemingly holy. Amen. But deep down, you know they rage in wolves. Amen. They wolves and see clothing. Amen. And you know you got to depart from them. Amen. God is telling you to Go into the old path. Go, give me, give me, give me, read again. And the scripture says, Stay ye in the ways. Stay ye in the ways. And see. And see. And ask for the old path. And ask for the old path. Where is the good way? Where is the good way? And walk therein. And walk therein. And you shall find rest for your soul. And you shall find rest for your soul. Now I'm going to tell you what you have done. You but, did this. Keep reading. But they said, But they said, We will not walk therein. That's what people say. We will not walk therein. God called it a good path, the path of holiness, the path of holiness. And the first thing they said, we ain't going to walk in that path. That's uh, We ain't going to walk in that. I'm going to do what I want to do. You know what? You can say that all you want. I can do what I want to do. Hell is full of people, Amen. full of people that do what they want to do. <laughs> is that right? Hell is full of people that wants to do what they want to do. Amen. Is that right? You do what you want to do, and you have that mindset, you're going straight to hell. Amen. You love your sin so much that you don't want to come to God, you're going straight to hell. Amen. You can say, well, I, I just want to smoke my weed, I want to smoke my cigarettes, and I want to do what I want to do, and there's nothing nobody could do about it. I may cannot do nothing to you, but God can. Amen. The Bible says you shall fill the man that can cast that body, destroy that body and that soul. He'll cast your whole soul straight to hell, and then he will bring cancer on the body to destroy the body. Amen. That God is powerful. The Bible says you shall fear him. Amen. Is that right? Amen. You shall fear him. Folks don't fear God. Amen. Anytime you can look at God's word and say, I ain't doing that. Amen. <laughs> Is that right? When the Bible said, come out for fornication. <laughs> I, I'm going to do what I want to do. Amen. Uh, it's my body. I can do what I want to do. Amen. When the Bible said, don't get, uh, 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 you can't get tattoos. Well, uh, if it's a scripture, I can do what I, I can get it. When the Bible tells you, elders, to feed the flock of God, and they teach you the qualifications of an elder, but the elders say, I'm not going to meet them qualifications. Amen. It's too hard. Amen. I'm going to do what I want to do. Amen. I'm going to say what I want to say. Amen. I'm going to shout the way I want to shout. Amen. And I'm going to be unruly in the church because I'm going to do what I want to do. Amen. Is that right? Amen. And the Bible says what? They are all going out of the way. They are all going out of the way. Give chapter and verse four. Romans chapter 3 and verse 12. Romans chapter 3 and verse 12. They are all going out of the way. They are all, They are together become unprofitable. They are together. Notice how sinners join hand to hand as the scriptures say. Amen. They love getting in groups and talking. They love getting in groups talking about fornication and adultery. Amen. They get together talking. They think they're so cool. Amen. They, what they call it? They think they're so live. You get what I'm telling you? Amen. Give chapter and verse again. Romans chapter 3 and verse 12. Romans chapter 3 and verse 12. They think they cool as ever. Amen. Oh, man, yeah, you know, we get these girls, man. You know how it is, big dog. Yeah, we get these girls, man. You know what's going on, bro? Amen. Man, I got six girls on my phone, man. Right? 
Yeah, man. Yeah, you know what it is, bro. Man, yeah, bro. My Monday, I talked to Keisha. Tuesday, I talked to Betty. My Wednesday, I talked to both of them. You know what I'm saying, bro? I'm a real trooper. The Bible says what? The Bible says they're all going out of the way. Y'all all going out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. You ain't unprofitable. Notice how these so-called pimps have got no jobs. No jobs. Can't even take care of themselves, nor their mama. And the first thing they want to do is sit up there and say, I'm a pimp. Amen. Wearing purple jackets. Wearing pinky rings they got at the gas station. Amen. Wearing ankle chains. Getting their hair done every day, knowing they can't afford it. On child support by five different women. And then they still want to be a so-called pimp. Just foolish. The Bible says they are on what? They're all going out of the way. They are all going out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. That's what they is. Crazy. With their tongues, they have used the sea. That's what they do. And that's what's even going on with these Baptist preachers. You got Reverend Lucifer walking in the church, <laughs> preaching a message on a pulpit, letting you know all you got to do is believe. Believe in the Lord. Believe in the Lord. Yes, sir. Believe all that mess that he doing on the pulpit. Make no sense at all. Amen. Just believe in the Lord. And then they will try to quote scripture they don't even understand. I drive by one. Uh, uh, I drive by one uh, Baptist church. He, he quoted the scripture. I believe it was Acts seventeen thirty, when he said, "In time ignorance, in, in the time of your ignorance, God awake that, for He commands all people, every nation, everywhere, to come to repentance." The first thing that brother did was that brother said that and he a Baptist church. There's no repentance in the Baptist church. Amen. What you were, you don't even know how to repent. Is that right? I don't will. It's just telling the Lord you sorry and turning from your sins. You think that's the only thing you got to do? Amen. I'm going to educate you for a minute, Miss Baptist uh, Reverend Hickelbotham, because I'm going to show you something in the Bible that you missed. Amen. Give me Acts chapter 2, and I want you to begin me at verse 36, Amen. because this is where Reverend Hickelbotham missed. Acts, the second chapter, verse 36. And the scripture says, and the scripture says, therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly, let all the house of Israel, God's people need to listen to this. What? That God had made that same Jesus when you crucified both Lord and Christ. Uh huh. Now, when they were, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? That's what your people is asking unto you. You say you preach repentance. Notice how they say men and brethren. What shall we do? Now I want you to go to verse 40. And the Bible says what? And the scripture says, And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Save yourself from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly receive the word. They that gladly received the word what? We're baptized. We're baptized. Now you say it's just a belief. So if you preach repentance unto somebody, Peter, you got to compare it with the apostle Peter. If you preach repentance unto somebody and you tell them out of your mouth, all you do, and they ask you, brethren, what shall we do? And you say, all you got to do is just believe in Jesus Christ, and that's it. That don't line up what Peter said. It don't line up what he said. Amen. And Peter had the key. The key was obeying what God told him to do. Amen. Is that right? Amen. And then the Bible said, those that was glad to what? It said, and then they that were glad, then they, then they that gladly received this word were baptized. Then they that were gladly received this word were baptized. So those people that have a sincere heart and the will in mind, that heard the message on the day of the Pentecost, got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Is that right? Amen. Now, let's deal with the Baptist church. The Baptist church message of repentance does not coexist or line up with the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. And it don't line up when the Peter said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Amen. Is that right? Notice how he said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. 
That's what Jesus told him. Because Jesus said, receive ye the Holy Ghost as he breathed upon them. And then he brought into the New Testament and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. It got to line up. That's why I said the old way. <laughs> is that right? Because this old way is a way that came down from heaven. That's the salvation plan to Amen. save God people. Amen. And if God people don't want to receive that salvation plan, then God got a place called hell. That people will be dropped. The Bible said cast. Amen. God is so angry. He throw you up in there. You know, on movies, it show God just grabbing you and just walking with you and putting you in there. The Bible said, cast Amen. into hell. God cast the angry. God throw you up in there. It don't matter if you land it. It don't matter if you land on your pinky toe. It don't matter if you land on head first. The Bible said, cast Amen. into hell. Amen. Is that right? Amen. God will cast nations. Amen. God will cast cities. Amen. God will cast... Countries, Amen. God will cast continents Amen. into hell. Why? Amen. Because they went against the word of God. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Baptist church believe one save, always save. Amen. You say you can never lose your salvation. Amen. You say you can't lose it no matter what. Uh, you can keep your salvation, and that's nothing that can make you lose it. Let me ask you a question, Baptist preacher. Amen. The Bible said the Spirit speaks expressly. That in the latter time, some shall depart from the faith. You don't got to go to it. Amen. Give it heed to seducing spirits. Now, notice how the Bible says some shall depart from the faith. That means they was in the faith and they left out of the faith. Amen. And then the Bible said giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrine of devils and lies and hypocrisy. So that means they leave out of God and they go unto sin. And the Bible said the wages of sin is death. Amen. And one saved, always saved, was not even in the Old Testament. Because the Bible said if a brother that did righteousness come unto sin, God said, I shall not remember the righteous deeds that he's doing because he's in mess. Is that right? Amen. So the Old Testament don't even cover up your lie. Amen. The New Testament don't cover up your lie. Amen. The one saved, always saved, was a doctrine of the devil. Amen. And it always been. Amen. Folks want to say, I run to the Greek. And I can show you in the Greek that you can never, ever lose your salvation. Find me the one scripture in the Bible that the Bible said you, cannot, uh, uh, you can never lose your salvation. Amen. You can't find it. And then you, the Bible says that, well, uh, what about the scripture says, he that overcome, he shall give them uh, a robe in everlasting life. Amen. Which you... What you think overcoming is. Amen. What you think overcoming is. Well, well, well brother, overcome means that you, you get into the faith. No, hold, hold it, brother. Jesus says that be of good cheer. I have overcame the world. If a brother experience, and I'm going to back it up with scripture because you don't know what you're talking about. If a brother experience the true faith of God, walking in God's ways, why do you think the Bible says he that have tasted the heavenly gift and the Holy Ghost? And have walked in the ways that God is impossible to renew them again. So that means once they've always saved us a lot. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Is that right? Amen. If you taste of the Holy Ghost and taste of all the miracles of God, and you decide inside your mind that you were going to walk away from God permanently, permanently, that's a place called hell. Amen. And the Bible said it is impossible. Think about that for a minute. People say, why would God say that? Let me educate you. Why would God say that? The reason why God said it is because if a brother see all the good things of God, God leading them, protecting them, guiding them, give them the Holy Ghost, they know the scriptures, they know what God could do, they know what God want to do for them, and they live in such a good life. And they decide by the spirit of hell to, to, to allow the devil, understand, they allow the devil to enter into them and to go into the world. God is letting you know that God's going to give them a reprobate mind. Amen. That's an immediate reprobate mind. That's that type of spirit is worse than backsliding. Because even in backsliding, you still have a limit. Is that right? Amen. Even in backsliding, you still got a limit and morals. But this type of behavior, you got no morals and you got no concept and you don't care no more. Amen. Because you allowing Reverend Lucifer to lie unto you and give you a doctrine for hell and you receive it. 
Is that right? Amen. The Bible said return back to the old ways. Yes, I'm going to keep coming with the scriptures and beating the Baptist church to pieces. Amen. I'm going to keep beating the Baptist church. Everybody that goes into a Baptist church, I'm letting you know, I'm putting you on notice. Everybody, Amen. you walk in that Baptist church, you see Reverend Lucifer with slick back hair, and he tell you you don't got to speak in tongues. Amen. Reverend Lucifer, you shut up the doors of heaven so nobody can enter in. Now, Reverend Lucifer, I want you to follow me in your Bible for a minute. I want everybody to stay in Jeremiah because you stop people from speaking in tongues and you discourage them to speak in tongues. I want everybody to stay in your mind. I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And I want you to go unto me if any man be a, 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 a prophet or a spiritual. Amen. I want you to go right there. And the Bible says what? And the scripture says, if any man think himself to be a prophet. And give me chapter and verse, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 37. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 37. I want you to hear this for a minute. If any man to be a prophet or what? Or spiritual. Uh huh. Let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Now listen to this. Keep reading. And the scripture says, but if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. If any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Keep going. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophecy and forbid not to speak with tongues. Forbid not what? To speak with tongues. Now that's what the Baptist church do. They stop you when you want to speak in tongues. They stop you and say, you don't got to do that. You don't got to do that. The Bible said forbid not to speak in tongues. Amen. You broke the scripture. It's because you are a hypocrite. Amen. You get angry and say, I don't speak in tongues. You don't got to do that either. It's not a requirement to speak in tongues. It ain't a requirement at all. All you got to do is believe. That's a lie. I say that's a lie. Because the Bible don't teach that. You can take your theology and throw it straight in the trash. Because theology from the devil. Amen. Is that right? The Bible said forbid not to speak in tongues. I want you to raise your hand. Has somebody forbid you to speak in tongues? Amen. And it was a Baptist. Amen. Exactly. I already know. Amen. I already know they try to stop you from speaking in tongues. You know why? It's because they got the spirit of the devil up in them. Amen. Have you ever looked at the uh, the wicked and it's like when they pray, you will say stuff is happening. Amen. Have you ever th have you ever thought that? Like when they pray, stuff happened right there and there. I'm gonna give you some understanding for a minute. God. His won't hear the prayers of the wicked. Only if it's repentance. Amen. Because they separated from God. For the Bible says your sins have separated you from your God. You're Amen. separated from God. Is that right? Amen. And since there's a separation from God, the question is when will God allow a wicked person to get blessed? He will allow a wicked person to get blessed with salvation. So the wicked won't be called wicked no more. He will be called holy. Is that right? Amen. Just break it some down for a minute. So you will sit back and say, man, this sin is getting blessed and I'm not getting blessed. That's a lie. The devil is tricking you. Amen. The devil knows how to give good gifts. Amen. Is that right? Amen. The devil knows how to give good gifts. Amen. He will, sometimes when people pray on to, uh, and say they pray to the Lord, they pray to the Lord, they be praying to the devil. I know that hurts a lot of people's feelings. But they pray to the devil because they don't even know God. How can you call upon him when you don't even know him? Who they calling upon? Who they talking to? When they, when, when they say, I, I heard the spirit tell unto me, like they be saying, to do this or to do that. They be saying that. But you got no Holy Ghost. <laughs> so who are you hearing? Amen. It's dead right. You got to be careful when you say that God said something and you don't know who he is. Amen. Folk will say, well, I think I'm right with God. I don't care if you think you're right. You want to know that you're right with God. Are you keeping his word? Amen. Are you lining up with scripture? Baptist preachers for years been tricking folk. You can go to almost every street corner. They don't make a change in the community and they don't change nothing. Amen. You go to the church and they got their so-called deacons from hell. You got Reverend Lucifer. And, and Reverend Lucifer is married to Miss Satan. Amen. And then they get together, and Reverend Lucifer get up there, and when he preached, the Lord said, uh, he will, 
He will never forsake you. He will never believe you. That's a lie. That's a lie. Because if you're not righteous, if you're not lining up with God, God will leave you. God will walk away from you. But he made the assumption to make you believe that everybody in the church is holy. That's called a cult. Is that right? That's a cult. God has standards. God has laws. And if a church is not governed by the law of God, by the standards of God, then I'm sorry, it's a cult. Is that right? It's a cult. Folks get mad. There ain't no cult. Now, brothers and sisters, since you in the cult, that is the Baptist church. And you know, the Baptist church be preaching. They'll be saying, ah, you could do this. <laughs> you could do that. <laughs> keep coming and on and keep coming on. <laughs> keep walking and walking and walking and talking. <laughs> keep walking and walking and talking and talking. <laughs> Grab your neighbor and shake your neighbor and wiggle your neighbor hair. All that mess they tell you to do. My question unto you is that when the preacher preach that message from hell, why are you speaking in tongues to it? Why are you saying thank you, Jesus, to it? Have you once sat down and said, I'm going to find what he's saying in the Bible? Because if he's saying something that lines up with Scripture, then I can believe it. But I know, and that I know that I know, 100% of the time, these Baptist preachers don't even line up with the Bible. Is that right? They got church mothers that... The church mothers in the church, they govern the church. They control who preach, and they control who don't preach. First lady is in a pastor ear, telling the pastor, I don't like this person. I don't like that person. And then when they say that, the pastor get up there and preach a message targeting people. I tell the whole world, it's time for you to come back to what's written in the Bible. God has never started the Baptist church. The Baptist church was made from devils. That's what it was made from. The Baptist church bring confusion. The Baptist church bring pain. And the Baptist church will send you to hell. Is that right? If they forbid you to speak in tongues and they don't follow the whole Bible, that church is a church of the devil. Just take a drive around. Look at all these Baptist churches out here. On the corner, this Baptist church. On that corner, that Baptist church. On this corner, that Baptist church. They don't even know nothing about the Bible. They don't know nothing about the Bible. Because if they knew something about God, they would turn in the Bible and knew ain't nothing wrong with speaking in tongues. Ain't nothing wrong with tearing and fasting for the Holy Ghost. And ain't nothing wrong with getting baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And that once saved, always saved garbage. So they force down the mouth of their members. They would know that it's a lie. Amen. They would know that it's a lie. You want to know why they all know it's a lie? It's because they are their father, the devil. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Is that right? Amen. And they're the first people to talk. Always oh, trying to give advice. When you speak in tongues, you don't. You need an interpreter. That's the only way you can speak in tongues. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm going to say it like the apostle Paul say. Oh, foolish Galilean, who bewitched you? Amen. You're just foolish. Amen. Speaking of things you don't even know about. Amen. Just foolish. You need an interpreter to speak in tongues. Paul was talking about edification of the church, but he said if somebody have no interpreter, they can speak to themselves and unto the Lord. Is that right? Amen. That's the problem with folks. They get to talking and talking and talking, have no understanding of God. Is that right? Amen. Like that one false prophet where he said, I can't find nowhere in the Bible where it says that you praying in an unknown tongue. Then he said that uh, uh, people made me feel so bad about that I had to speak in tongues. It, it just made me feel uncomfortable. And he said that you don't got to go to the Bible. Uh, uh, we don't use the uh, book of Acts for doctrine. We use the epistles. Amen. The Bible said all scripture Amen. written a four times for your learning. Amen. That we through comfort and patience of the scriptures may have hope. Amen. Now, if we don't use the book of Acts for doctrine. Is that right? Amen. Then why did Jesus was there? Amen. Then now Jesus tell unto the disciples, wait here until thou receive power from among us. Then now Jesus say that. Then now Jesus came back unto the apostle Paul 
and say, hold not that beef, for I have many in this city. Jesus appeared many times in the act of the apostles. I want to use the whole Bible because the Bible says we're turned back to the old path. Amen. Is that right? Amen. That's the old path. Amen. Notice how Jesus Christ used the whole Bible. Amen. When he had the Old Testament, he used the whole thing. From start to finish, he used the Bible and swung it like a sword. Is that right? He didn't, he didn't care what you thought about it. You may got mad at Jesus, but Jesus didn't care. You may got mad at Peter, but Peter didn't care. You may got mad at other people, but they didn't care. They kept preaching. You may got mad at the prophets, but they didn't care. Why? Because they were standing on a firm foundation. Is that right? I'm just being honest up here. Folks get mad at me because I speak about a Baptist church. I'm going to keep speaking about a Baptist church. And ain't nothing nobody going to do about it either. I'm going to keep speaking about a Baptist church. The Baptist church is of the devil. I say it again for the second time. The Baptist church is of the devil. All you folks, you just just got random names on and just say Baptist. And see Solomon Baptist, Azulu Baptist. Missionary Baptist, just making up stuff. Denzel Washington Baptist, just making up stuff. Flora Marijuana the Baptist, is anything. Is that right? Amen. It's weird. You even name your Baptist church out some water. Deer Park Water Baptist. You know you of the devil. Is that right? Amen. Now you may say you don't talk about it. I'm names preacher. That's what God gave you. He didn't give you that. God's it's creative. You made that junk up. That's trash. Amen. Is that right? Baptist preacher, I got a Bible for when the Bible says get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you got a Bible that say once saved, always saved? It's the true way, and you got to find it in the Bible. Amen. Find it in the Bible when they say you can never, ever, ever, ever lose your salvation. Find me that in the Bible, and you better not be in Scripture. I challenge the whole world. Amen. Find me that in the Bible, and also church and God in Christ. You know better than them. Now, you should tell folks to tarry the speaking tongues. Now, you say if you keep the fruits of the Spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you keep the fruits of the Spirit, you, you, you feel with the Holy Ghost. Don't even understand the fruits of the Spirit. Don't even understand it all. How you going to bear fruit if you don't got the Spirit that's in you that make you produce this fruit? Amen. You don't got no Holy Ghost in you. You a liar. All y'all care about is money. You come down here and you lean on your, for, your former leader. Bishop C.A. Mesa, you will say, yeah, we love him, but you don't even follow the teaching that he believed in. Is that right? Amen. And then, church of God in Christ, you said that woman going to be preaching. Find me that in the Bible. Amen. Is that right? Amen. And if you say it is in there, and you say that the woman at the well t- was preaching, you a liar. Amen. If you say Mary, get the first message, you a liar. Amen. I don't find it in the Bible. Amen. And you can't find it in the Bible because you lying on God. Amen. Is that right? And you won't find it in the Bible. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Church and God in Christ. You believe the divorce and remarry. You believe you could divorce your wife and marry another one while your first wife is still living. Amen. I got a Bible that says you can't do that. Amen. I got a Bible that says you're bound by the law as long as you're living. Amen. I got scripture that tells you, uh, he that is married, seek not to be loose. Amen. I got a Bible for that. But you don't got Bible to say it's okay to divorce your wife. Amen. And I know you're going to run to Levitic, uh, Leviticus, no, Deuteronomy chapter 24, and say that uh, he that want to divorce his wife, give her the bill of divorcement, and you able to divorce her. But hold on for a minute, brother. Jesus said that it was said of old times by Moses, mm-hmm. that if you want to put away your wife, write her a bill of divorcement, then put her away. But Jesus says, but I said unto you, hallelujah, Jesus. He that put away his wife commits adultery. Hold it. Take me straight to that scripture. I want that scripture going to balance it out. And the scripture says in Mark chapter 10 and verse 11. What did it say? And he said unto him, whosoever shall put away his wife. Whosoever shall put away his wife. And marry another. And marry another one. Committed of adultery against her. And committed of adultery against her. And if a woman shall put away her husband. And if a woman shall put away her husband. And be married to another. And be married. Now understand, it's saying put away and be married. It's a connection. A wife could say, I don't want to be with my husband no more. And the Bible condones separation. It condones it. 
But if the wife say, I'm going to divorce him and get pick up Mr. Yeah. Lucifer, Franklin, Amen. then I, I don't work like that. Amen. Is that right? Amen. The Bible don't condone that. Now I got. I want to ask you a question. Give me the book of Ma uh, Matthew 5, 27. Because this is what these folks run to. Then they get up there preaching. Oh, you can't divorce your wife. God condones you divorcing your wife. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You got to understand what if she gets abused? What if she gets beat? The Bible condones separation. Amen. And the Bible says what? You have heard that it was said of them of old time. You have heard that it was said of them of old time. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you. But I say unto you. That whosoever looking on a woman to lust after her. Whosoever looking on a woman to lust after her. I've committed adultery with her already in his heart. Committed adultery with her in his heart. Keep going. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out. And that right eye offend thee, pluck it out. And cast it from thee. And cast it from thee. For it is proper for thee that one of thy members shall perish. And not that thy whole body shall be cast into hell. Is that right? Come on. Amen. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. Uh-huh. For it is proper Give for me a don't you part. Come on. And it says that in verse 31. Okay, yeah. okay. I, I want to make something clear. I made the mistake. Now, Brother John. Brother John says Matthew chapter 5, verse 31, correct? Matthew chapter 5, verse 31. Thank you, minister. And the Bible says what? It has been said. Uh -huh. Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. That's what you do. And the Bible says what? But I say unto you. But I say unto you. That whosoever shall put away his wife. Whosoever shall put away his wife. Saving for the cause of fornication. Now we're going to deal with that fornication part. Because <laughs> y'all like to run to that and say, but the Bible said because of sexual immortality. No, it said fornication. Is that right? Amen. You know, in these new translations, they say sexual mortality. Immorality. Immorality, my bad. Sexual immorality. That's the first thing they do. Amen. And so it's okay to me, for me to put away my wife Amen. and she cheat on me. <laughs> they say, my wife cheated, I'm putting her away. And I'm marrying someone else. Amen. Pastor, she got a family. What's someone else, Pastor. And I feel so bad, preacher. I feel so bad. The Bible says what? The scripture says, but I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, save it for the cause of fornication. Save it for the cause of fornication. Causes her to commit adultery. And causes her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committed for adultery. You hear that? The Bible says you cause her to commit adultery because she thought that she thinking her mind after the divorce, she could go marry someone else. So she commits adultery and you commit adultery. Is that right? Amen. And and the Bible says that he that married her commits adultery. That means that a brother will leave his wife that is already married would leave his wife to go get with someone else's wife. Both of y'all in adultery. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Now I'm going to deal deeper with this. Because the Bible says save ye because of fornication. Now we're going to deal with the fornication part. If a man cheats on his wife, it's not called fornication, brother. It's not. Fornication, the word fornication is premarital sex. Amen. So now we got to deal with what the Bible say about it. Amen. Is that right? Amen. I believe it's in the book of Luke, right? Amen. Now I want you to give me the book of Luke and the Bible says what? And the scripture says. What did it say? In Matthew. Matthew. Chapter 1, verse 20. Matthew chapter 1, verse 20. And it says that the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto to thee Mary thy wife. Hold it. Now, he said, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. Amen. Why would the angel call Mary his wife if he ain't married to them? Amen. You get what I'm telling you? Amen. So now we got to deal with Mary and Joseph for a minute. To describe a situation. Amen. What the Bible says. In verse 18, now the birth of Jesus was on this wise. Uh -huh. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. Once when Mary was espoused, means engaged unto Joseph what? Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Hold it. When a man is espoused, engaged, what a, uh, what a woman. 
if he's engaged with a woman, the Bible gives him the authority to call and say, this is my wife. But he cannot act and do activities with that woman as if that is his wife. You get what I'm saying? So you could say, oh, oh, this is my this, this is my future wife. You have that. Amen. You have that. Amen. But understand is that that don't mean you can have sex with her. So when the Bible says the cause of fornication, it's talking about being engaged. Yeah. And as a man saying, this is my wife. Amen. So if she cheats and you decide that the you being engaged to that brother or sister is off as they would say, Amen. then you can leave and go find someone else. Amen. Is that right? Amen. But once you get married, paperwork get done. Wedding is done and everything. Brother, you bound by the law <laughs> as long as you live it. But preacher, I was young and dumb, preacher, and I married the wrong person. I'm, I'm sorry, but the Bible said you're bound by the law. As long as you live, a preacher, a, a, a preacher, yes. Preacher, you don't understand. She fat and I'm skinny, preacher. I can't be with no fat woman. <laughs> You're bound by the law. As long as you live, for preacher, pre- pre- preacher, I'm, not, I'm just saying it's hard, preacher. It's so hard, preacher, because these other women be looking, be looking so good. The Bible said if you look on another one to lust, Amen. you commit adultery in your heart. It said you're bound. By the law, as hey, long as you're living. You hear that church and God in Christ? You're going to use theology to dispute what I'm saying. Amen. You're going to use theology and say, ain't nothing wrong with marriage and divorce. God allows it. That's a lie. Amen. If Jesus Christ is your Lord, you're going to accept this message. Amen. And you're going to say, I cannot divorce my wife. But preacher, she married to someone else with a family. She's in adultery. You just got to make sure you don't fall in that trap. Make sure you clean. But preach, it hurts me so much. Pray to the Lord. Bible said, cast out cares on him, for he cares for you. Amen. Pray to the Lord and cast your cares on God. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Don't get mad at me because I'm delivering mail. I'm just letting you know what the Bible said. Amen. That's what the Bible said. Anyway, this ain't me. That's what the Bible said. Amen. The Bible said that. Amen. I didn't say it. Well, you judging preacher. I ain't judging nothing. You didn't say Jesus is judging when he preached about this. That's why you getting mad at me. They said, right, Jesus preached about it, so I preached about it. I've, I've won it over there, and I've now wanted to preach about it. You can't get mad at me. Is that right? Amen. So that's why I want to let everybody know. You, you, you divorce your wife and marry another one. You would have told you. That goes with your bishop. That goes with all these Baptist preachers Amen. that said you can't lose your salvation. They're full of adultery. Amen. Divorce and remarry. The preacher getting up there with some fake anointing from the devil. <sighs> my, 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 my glory to God. Amen. Glory. God, I got a message that I want to tell the whole congregation, the church of the devil. I want to let you know right now that when I was walking, I heard a whisper. Amen. And he said, I'll have a second wife. And they act like they're so anointed. They will read only the first chapters of every book. And then they will say, when I was at my calling, and I was in the spiritual river by Chabar. And I heard a dove says, get that second wife. So I want to let you know that pastor needs to complete his assignment. And the, the assignment is not complete until I get that second wife. Your pastor got a vision from hell. <laughs> Amen. And he's full of the devil and full of himself. Is that right? I'm just being honest. And then when the second wife don't want to do the things he want, he'll be using it in the urinal. And then he'll act like he got the spirit. Glory to God. Use it all over himself. And then he'll say, my niece was not, my assignment is not complete. And I want to tell you as I'm speaking, Speaking glory, that there is a third wife out there, and it's the church mother. I'm letting you know. I'm letting you know. And then they do the preach about. Just bouncing. Bouncing. Bouncing backwards. 
sideways, and then they're about to fall, then catch themselves and get the bouncer back forward. They get your mother lies and hypocrisy. Amen. Is that right? Amen. I'm letting you know, you pastors of the devil. If he believes is that you can have a second wife while your first wife is still living, your pastor, Reverend Lucifer Hickabottom, it's of the devil. Amen. Is that right? Amen. That goes for every female preacher. Every woman preacher out there, the Bible said, I suffer a woman not to teach. It, no, it's a sort of authority over the man. Is she a woman pastor? Let I want you to know she's of the devil. Amen. Is that right? Amen. She didn't repent of her sins. She didn't get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ the correct way. She of the devil. Is that right? Amen. You just know these folks of the devil in Memphis. Memphis, Tennessee. You could just take a drive in South Memphis. Frazier. You could go to Alabama. You know they're full of the devil. You could just tell by the way they look at you. Don't know no Bible. Don't know nothing. It's full of the devil. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. And then they tell you, I just felt a need to tell you that God can. God can what? Preach these poetry messages. <laughs> Say the title of my message to send you to hell. It's God can. Is that all right? Amen. God will. God can go over. God can go under. God can go around. And God can go through making all this mess up. Is that right? The Bible says you're bound by the law as long as you're living. Is that right? Now I want to deal with the Hebrews, the fourth chapter. I want to let you know the benefit of you having the rest in Jesus when you return back to the old way that's written in the scripture. Give me Hebrews, the fourth chapter. And I want you to start me at verse 6. The book of Hebrews, the fourth chapter in verse 6. And the scripture says, mm-hmm. in verse 5. In verse 5, what it say? And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. At this place again, they shall enter into my rest. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein. Mm-hmm. And they to whom it was first preached enter not in because of unbelief. Uh-huh. Again, he limits to a certain day sent unto David, today after so long a time, yeah. as it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. If you will hear his voice, the Bible said, harden not your heart. For if Jesus had given them rest, if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterwards have spoken of another day? You hear that? If he afterwards have spoken of another day. There remained therefore a rest to the people of God. There remained therefore of what? A rest to the people of God. A rest therefore to the people of God. For if he that is entered to his rest, he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works. He also has ceased from his own works. As God did from his. Now let's break that down. The works that God has done was the creation of the whole world. So therefore, upon the Sabbath day, he rests. Now the Bible says he that has rest in who? It says that for he that entered to his rest, he also have ceased from his own works. He that is in Jesus Christ was ceased from sin. Because the works that man does, that Jesus Christ give him rest, is because a man ceasing from sin. Is that right? If he is walking in the way of the Lord, Standing on the way of the Lord, that he shall have rest in what? Jesus Christ. Now, notice how the Bible said the book of Jeremiah, the sixth chapter, when the Bible said, if you turn back into the old, if you go back to the old way, right? And you stay there and you shall have rest. Amen. Is that right? Amen. So, therefore, since the Bible is letting you know that, when the Bible describing rest, it's describing being in Christ. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Some folks say describe the Sabbath day, don't describe no Sabbath day. It's because there's a there's a work that man does and there's a work that God does. Amen. Is that right? Amen. The Sabbath day was a figure of things to come. It's a shadow of things to come, but Christ is the very image. And therefore, if Christ is the very image, that same Christ is the very image commands us to do things, certain things that we obligated to do. Amen. Now, when, when, when we had the shadow of things such as Sabbath days and dietary, and, uh, dietary laws and ceremonial laws, those things was commandments under the shadow of things. But now we got the very image, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Is that right? Amen. 
So I know folks gonna get mad and say you can't eat crawfish. You can. I, I remember one sister said that. Well, you can't eat crawfish or shellfish or all that stuff. And I showed her what it uh, stuff in the Bible, and she told me she said that my church is full of the devil. I say, show sure is. <laughs> is that right? Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Folks don't know what they be talking about nowadays. They running and talking and manipulating and doing everything they want to do to deceive God's people. Is that right? That's why I'm banging on the Baptist church with the ham of the scriptures. The Baptist church is full of the devil. I know y'all want to write back to me. I know y'all want to comment on some of my videos. I don't care what a bit. I say it once and I say it again. The Baptist church is of the devil. I don't care if it's packed to corner to corner from the east to the west. There will be, I don't care if it's 10,000 people up in there. All 10,000, they will pin up their sins the correct way. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and get filled with the Holy Ghost. They will be dropped in hell. Is that right? Amen. They will be dropped in hell. Now, notice how the Bible said they won't enter into his rest because of unbelief. Notice how the Bible said that. The reason why, because you got people that, for some reason, do not want to believe the right way. It is some in them. I can't do it. I can't, I just can't, I just can't come to the point where I can believe. They don't want to submit to God. But they got no problem submitting to the devil. Amen. They got no problem doing what they want to do, smoking their cigarettes, twerking on each other, twerking on headlights, Amen. twerking on the top of the car at every red light, twerking and twerking, and then dudes get with them and twerk them. I was working on my wife's car, and there was a brother with a pink shirt came out there wiggling and twirling his hips. Just twirling his hips. Is that right? Amen. But a twirling his hips to some weird, funny rap music. Just twirling his hips. And I turned around and looked at him and turned my head back. He kept on twirling and twirling and twirling. I, I say that to say this is that you got more brothers that's comfortable with being feminine and gay. Amen. So therefore, if they want to sit in their sins and don't turn to God, is that right? Amen. Just being honest with you. They don't want to turn to God. They got a problem with God. They got such a problem with God that it don't matter what the Bible say. They're going to keep doing what they're doing. Is that right? They're going to keep doing what they're doing. They arrogant. They're full of the devil. they full of the devil. Especially Church of God in Christ and Baptist. They're full of the devil. Amen. Something wrong with them. Something deeply wrong with them. They're the devil. All Every last pe people up in there, the devil. Making fake miracles, they're nothing but the devil. Talk about they know God and they fail with God's order. Don't even know nothing about God. They didn't even experience God. And then they get a calling from hell, letting them know you have been promoted to send more souls to hell. You need to go be a pastor. Amen. And they take that calling and they go on a pulpit and preach lies. Is that right? Amen. And then they get on Indeed and preach more lies. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Searching to be pastors. Searching to be bishops. Not knowing no Bible, no scripture. And then the first thing they do is say, I feel the anointing. You don't feel nothing. Amen. Notice how when they get that money, they say they feel with anointing. Amen. Notice how when they, people start to get, come around them and people come to the church, they say they feel the anointing. Amen. Brother, you weren't feeling that at first when you was empty. Amen. You weren't fasting. You weren't praying. You don't even know his word, but yet you say you feel the anointing. Amen. Is that right? That's why I'm against the Baptist church. Preacher, it sounds like you've been hurt by a Baptist church. I don't care about Baptists. I've never, I've ne I've never even be, be under with you. I don't even remember me going to a Baptist church. I don't remember me going, but I know they of the devil because I know they doctrine. Amen. They of the devil. All of and Church of God in Christ, and Church of Christ, and Lutheran, and Church of the Renaissance, and Church of Nazarene. All of them of the devil. Because there's one way, Amen. one baptism. One faith, Amen. one God, Amen. one spirit Amen. is one. Amen. And therefore, Baptists believe three. I believe one because God said he was one. Amen. Who are you going to stand before me and make me scared? There's more on my side than it is of yours. Amen. When God comes, if I line up with his word, I'm going to be with him. Amen. But you Baptist preachers, you're going to be left behind to a world full of the devil. Amen. Is that right? That's why I'm going to stand on the Lord Amen. when the Bible said, for the Lord himself Amen. shall descend out of the heaven with a shout, with the trombones of an archangel. Amen. And then verse 17 of Thessalonians chapter 4 said, those that are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him in the clouds. Amen. 
the Bible was describing his first resurrection, Amen. how folk was going to rise up to meet that Lord. Amen. My Lord got power. My Lord got strength. Amen. My Lord could do all things. Amen. My Lord was saving souls. Amen. My Lord believed in one God. Amen. My Lord believed in the baptism of Jesus' name. Amen. My Lord got everything in his hands. Amen. The Bible said the earth is the Lord's Amen. and the fullness thereof. Amen. Everything in it is the Lord's. Everything is in the Lord's. For the prophet David said, for he have knitted me inside of the womb. It's my Lord got the power to do that. You can go to Baptist, jumping and rolling and spinning up stupid stuff. But you can come unto my God, which is Jesus, and repent of your sins. Get baptized in the name of my God and turn from your wicked ways and receive ye what? The Holy Ghost. And continue steadfastly in the apostle doctrine, then you shall be added unto the church. My God got the power to add and to remove. My God got the power to uplift and to take down. And the Bible said, Who is he? And notice how the Bible describes us as clay. He said, Who is he? The question of one that formed him. Notice how people so arrogant. They go quickly to question the one that formed them, which is God. They say, God, it can't be true, God. You didn't do this, God. You can't be do, do that, God. Who else done it? No Big Bang Theory did it. Who else done it? We didn't came for no apes. It had to be a God. And the God revealed himself through preaching. He's trying to tell you to repent and turn unto him. Amen. That's why I'm against all of them. I'm even against Christian scientists telling you that back in Jesus' day, this is what happened. How you know? Well, we got historical evidence that back in his day, that's what they did. How you know that that, that object was for what you're saying? Amen. Well, we got speculation. I don't want speculation. I want truth. Amen. How you know? You know why? Because they all have been fooling the devil. They don't know what they're talking about. Is that right? Amen. That's because you know a little scripture don't mean you need to be up there preaching and lying to folks. Amen. Is that right? Amen. My God got all power in his hands. And that's nothing my God can't do. They say they believe a big bang. I don't believe no big bang. Amen. I don't believe in no science telling me we came from apes, a racist scientist. Amen. I don't believe in that mess. Because last time I checked, apes are either black or brown. They didn't, what the white folks was supposed to came from, that theory too. White apes, they're lying to you. They're making up lies unto you. My God said there was Adam Amen. and there was Eve. Amen. All nationalities came from Adam. And it came from Eve. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Culture tell you that women could be hoes and thoughts. And men could be uh, thoughts and thoughts and hoes as well. That's what they tell you in society. But my God said you got to be holy. Amen. Is that right? Amen. The Bible said you got to be holy. Amen. Is that right? Amen. That's why I'm going to stand on the Lord. Amen. I encourage everybody. I know it's hard. I know stuff don't go the way you wanted to go. Stand on the Lord. In these last days, stand on the Lord. Amen. In these last days, I repeat, stand on the Lord. Amen. Without God, you will fall flat on your face and die. Amen. You got to stand on the Lord. Amen. You get what I'm telling you? Amen. If those folks don't want to stand with you, it is what it is. It is what it is. Is that right? Amen. Friends left me because I want to stand on the Lord. People left me because I want to stand on the Lord. People curse at me because I want to stand on the Lord. It don't matter what they say. Amen. At the end of the day, I only care what God thinks. Amen. Is that right? Amen. You got to stand on the Lord. Amen. Is that right? Amen. The Bible says what the Bible says. And the scripture says, Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein. Some must enter therein. And they to whom it was first preached enter not in because of unbelief. That's, what, that's what's going on about the church. You got no Holy Ghost because you don't believe in it. You don't believe what the scripture says. Jesus said, he that believe in me as the scripture saith, out of that belly shall run rivers of living water. Amen. You got to believe on him. If you don't believe on him, you're not going to have no Holy Ghost. That's the problem. Your pastor don't know that because he got a fake anointing from the devil. That's why the devil anointed him with a ram horn. And he's sitting at that thing. He's so anointed, full of the spirit. He of the devil. Amen. Is that right? Amen. He's full of the devil. Is that right? He's full of the devil. He's sitting in a pit of sin. That's what's going on with him. 
Yeah, you feel what I'm telling you? I miss being out of the same with these Church of God in Christ preachers. You know, at Church of God in Christ, they have superintendents over districts. And over the districts, they will have a superintendent they don't like. And then they say, well, if God put, me as, put him as a leader, we're just going to get behind and respect it. Let me educate you for a minute. What if that leader is biblically uneducated? Would you stand behind him? What if he's a babe in Christ? Would you stand behind him? Because a babe is naturally is going to be prone to making mistakes. What if he's a babe in Christ? Are you still going to stand behind him? Well, that's what God wants. That ain't what God wants. Isaiah said, the Lord has given me the tongue of a learner that I may speak in season. So therefore, God, anytime God appointed a leader, he always gave them uh, uh, the, the, uh, the tools to do the work. He always do that. And therefore, for your, he shows call the superintendents over districts. Find me one scripture in the Bible where the Bible says that to appoint superintendents. That's what you appoint in businesses, not in the church. Is that right? Amen. I'm going to shut it down right here. And I'd like everybody, can you please stand up for your time?